What's up, YouTube? Today we are at Aqualife in Rockland, California, home of the largest selection of discus, and they also have a lot of great stuff in the saltwater hobby, corals, fish, and a bunch of other stuff. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we're here in the discus section, and Jason, the manager, will give us a little bit of a what he did this morning because it was a huge task. Yeah, so we showed up about midnight last night preparing for a huge shipment of 36 boxes. Wow. A little over 400 discus came in this morning, last night, whatever you want to call it. It, it was late. Wow. Um, lots of beautiful premium discus, several, several different varieties, probably more than the average person has ever seen in their life. More than I've ever seen, man. This is an incredible list of fish man i mean you you have the discus i'm not very familiar with them but with lots of reds blues purples yeah pigeon checkerboards checker ica reds leopards okay. pinyangs yes love it then we got the ginormous ones um what would you say is like the minimum tank requirement for a fish of this size i, I say 75 gallons because really? it's big and it's big enough that you can i mean you don't want to start out with this size you want right. to start out with something a little bit smaller <laughs> But it's a good size to get into because you can pack quite a few of them in there, but it's big enough to hold the filtration for the fish. So if you have a 75 gallon fish tank, how many discs can you have? I would say six is a good number to get in there. Six, so that it's okay. full enough that you can keep the aggression they down. They don't fight or They are like in that? the cichlid family, so you want to pack them in there a little bit to that. help. You know, if you just get two of them or three of them, you're gonna get a little bit more aggression. Right on, and what type of uh, foods do you feed them? Man, we feed them all kinds of food. A lot, anything high in protein from beef heart, krill, brine shrimp, salmon mix, I mean, a wide variety. And then you guys have mountains. a lot of that, right? Like, oh yeah, we sell it all in house. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, let's see some of the rare stuff that came in as well. Um, very funny, cause you would think it's the opposite, right? Not very colorful, very dual black stripes, but these are actually pretty rare and you guys have them. Yeah, we don't get in a whole lot of those. Some of them that are prettier can be more common, you know, <laughs> but definitely a wide, wide variety. There's probably 40 different kinds of discus in right now. Yeah, like I'm looking at this red one here and I'm like, that has to be like the gem, like the super rare one. And like, these are more common, right? Yes. Wow. I yeah, the, moon, the moonstones are pretty common. Uh, I, I, can these go over to the uh, Saltwater aquarium and like brackish style or no? No, no, no. Fully <laughs> fresh, but they are special needs. They, could, yeah. they, they are much warmer. I call them super tropical. They sit around 89 to 90 degrees while they're here. So do you guys do the whole quarantine process for just freshwater or do you do it for uh, saltwater as well? All, all of our systems that have fish in them do have medication. It's okay. not a full, you know, medic. Prazi Pro, it's, Oh yeah, Pra Prazi Pro, uh, Copper. Yeah. We do Riddick about five nights a week, Prazi over the weekend. Okay. You know, just I'll cause know. All, all the new fish come in Wednesday, you wanna make sure and keep healthy fish healthy. Don't right. wait for it to go downhill before you decide to do something. So kind of give me a little brief of what you guys um, have in stock. Right yeah, now. so from this end all the way down to the other end is our freshwater wall. This side is gonna be more tetras, more mollies, like you said, more community friendly fish. Lots of plecos and quarry cats mixed in all the tanks. The further down you go, it's gonna become semi-aggressive and then down at the end is the bigger cichlids, you know, more aggressive fish. Let's go that way because both Josh and I, we grew up with uh, 55 gallon aquariums with a lot of cichlids, you okay. know, like the, like the Jaguar, uh, Manning Gwensy, you know, Red Devils, like the uh, Jack Dempsey's, like all those, like that's what, how we grew up. We just mm -hmm. this, this is what you get into, yeah. you know, this is where the initial fun comes. Big <laughs> knife fish. Oh, I, big ne giant I actually never have one of those, but that's that's a gorgeous knife fish. That, that, that's a big one. Yeah, so our question is, I had about two electric blue Jack Dempsey's, baby ones, obviously. We've never seen an adult one, have you? I have not. I didn't really get into this. I skipped freshwater. I went straight into salt when I started. <laughs> yeah. I've recently dipped back into freshwater as I've been doing salt water for about 20 years now. And this is something that's new to me. So it's fun like it was back in, you know, day one. Well, but this electric blue Acaro is gorgeous right here, Josh. Look at this one. That's the one that I never actually had. Yeah, but it's not though. 
Yeah, a lot of what we have is going to be smaller, easier to transition into the tank rather than dropping a full-size fish in there. We do have the bottom tanks for a few larger fish, but for the most part, they're going to be smaller, more easier to adapt into your system. You know, kind of like a trigger. You don't want to drop a foot-long trigger in your system. It's a whole lot easier to do a baby. So let me tell you a funny story. I had a larger size, maybe about this size, butter coffee fish one time. I remember, like Phil's yesterday, he was punking my new like electric blue and some other stickers that I had bought, in, right? And me being a kid, maybe about 14 years old, I put it in a bag to like, you know how people put fishes like in their sumps to like teach them a lesson? I accidentally put the butter coffee too long. I left them in a bag so he can learn to not punk. At this time, he don't know much. You're a kid. He learned a big lesson. And he did, but he ended up dying. <laughs> and I was like, oh man. So I always tell the story like, don't do that, please. Now let's get to the meet and greedy, man. My love, my love, man. Uh, th this hobby, I've grown to love it. I've been in it two years now. Uh, lots of mistakes, I made a lot of mistakes, but, but like through those mistakes, I've learned a lot. Um, kind of give us a little run through of what you guys have in stock. So we got a little bit of everything. Most of what we have is gonna be reef safe, but you gotta cater to almost everybody. So we have butterflies, triggers, puffers, eels, big non-reef safe wrasses, such as this beautiful red chorus right down here. I love it. The adult version, man. I mean, I have a ras kingdom and uh, I want a baby red chorus. Do you have one? I don't believe we have a juvenile. I got a couple of small yellow choruses. One of the most stunning fishes, man. It's it really is. The, the blue star is just, so it, it's unmatchable. But it's just so, you know, like you said, it could get aggressive. It could eat all your like CGC's, shrimp, right? snails. But, I mean, I have you know, it is coral safe. And that, that is the confusion a lot of times. Yes. It is coral safe. It's just not reef safe. Explain that to, to more people. So say you have hammers, you fill yours, whatever. They won't touch that, but, touch but they'll touch like the clam. The like, exactly. You know. Puffers, not reef safe, not coral safe. They will munch on your reef. Whereas this will be safe with your corals, just not with your inverts. And like you said, some more sensitive. Who needs inverts when you can always replace them, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I have a RAS tank, so I kind of go by that motto, yes. Exactly. When, when you see the pile of snails yeah. build up, you replace them. Exactly, so can I put the sweet lips in my tank? I would recommend no. He needs a much, much larger tank. Don't let the small size of this fish oh, I know. confuse you. <laughs> um, I have a 150. Is that enough for, for, for now? For now, yes, but it will outgrow the 150. Okay. It'll need close to 300 gallons. Are these picky eaters? Very picky eaters, okay. very much. Well, if you can get one that eats out of the store, that's a much, much hardier decision than something that doesn't want to eat. So always, guys, highly recommend you guys to ask some of the employees to feed the fish, right? That's yeah, exactly. and, and feed something you're gonna feed at home. If you feed frozen, ask to feed frozen. If it's flake and pellets, ask for that. That's a good habit for you guys. Ask if they can feed them, if they're eating, great. If not, it's a risk, right? Exactly, that doesn't mean it's not gonna work. You know, it may have just got here, it's still a little stressed out, but if it is eating, much, much better chance for you. Right, because yesterday I had a, a, a Timorous shipped to me, right? And, and FedEx messed up the whole thing a day late, and I was thinking, ah, it's, it's gonna be dead. Caught it in, it was pretty much dead. As soon as you put them in there, I know I did the whole drip acclimate, put them in the tank, alive within seconds. I have never seen that in a fish. She started eating within seconds. I was like, bro, you were just dead. Like, and every fish is different, right? Every fish is different. You know, wrasses are one of my favorites. When you drop them into the tank, nine, out, nine times out of 10, they're gonna go straight into the exactly. sand, That's which is a so great shocked. defense mechanism. You know, rather than the new guy going into the tank okay. and picked okay. on, go hide, come out the next morning, you're one of the guys just swimming around. And unfortunately, I have one of the uh, Choyots, or what I call them the uh, orange leopards. Oh, yeah. So I got one in, I took great pictures of it, he was out. I got him on the 10th, have not seen him since. So I know he's somewhere in the sand, and it's like a, a crazy story, right? He pops up in the beginning, don't ever see him again, and now this fish is pretty much dead, put him in there, and he's in there like he was like the first fish in the tank. Like, grasses are just so unpredictable. Exactly. 
So we have four different flats. There's two rows. Each flat is its own system. So a flat and an end cap is a system. So there's four 300 gallon flats. This one's gonna be for a few larger colonies. Larger colonies on the other side, frags on this side. Each side split up into prices. Far side's $20, buy two, get one free. Right Great, now, all, the like all, all the time. That's all the time. All the time. Great deal, $20, you know, get you a couple of different options. If you're new into the game, get you a few different pieces to try out without breaking the budget. Oh, man, I had to think about that one, man. I like that one, though. Hey, guys, if we get 5,000 likes, we come back to Aqualife and we get in that nice hammer. So hit the like button right now. <laughs> I love that, I love that thing. It's purple, that's my favorite color. Uh, and that's a nice thing. I mean, you can have a hammer. It could be gold hammer, rainbow hammer, green hammer, purple. I mean, there's, you know, like these, you know, nothing super uncommon, but green with a purple tip. Uh, Completely. Oh yeah, a couple of Ghanis. This is the workshop, things that either, I mean, even some things that are softies are still really nice. There's a button scully didn't be in there. Oh, that's you a baby scully? Yeah, that's a little button scully. Not ever get big? Not as big as the regular, like, war paints. Oh, Some nice Florida Recordias and a couple of other mushrooms. Oh, yeah, these are gorgeous mushrooms, bro. Okay, and last question before I let you go, so I'm gonna be respectful of your time. What is your favorite coral in the store? I'm an LPS nut. Uh, I would have to say Euphilius. Which one though? Is there one right now that you're like, ah, I want it? Yes. It's got, it's, it's got to be the torches. I mean, uh -oh. you can't argue with a torch garden. And I, I have several tanks at home myself, but I do kind of think of this tank as my own. Okay. I buy things, order things that I would like to see in this because I see this tank just as much as I do the one at home. Day, right? Torch garden or the big acanthos? All right, guys, a huge shout out to the whole Aqua Life team, especially Jason Manger, for giving us this awesome tour of this amazing facility here in Rockland, California. I highly recommend you guys to come to Aqua Life, man. The way they go about their business is the right way. And honestly, I give them a thumbs up. See you guys on the next video.